This is the Sales Gravy Podcast. I'm Jeb Blunt, best-selling author of Fanatical Prospecting and Sales EQ, and I'm here to help you open more doors, close bigger deals, and rock your commission check. On this episode, I continue my conversation with Patrick Tenney, author of Unlocking Yes, on sales negotiation strategies and tactics. This is an important conversation because every salesperson must negotiate at some point during the sales process. Before we get started, though, I'm so excited to tell you about my brand new book, Objections, The Ultimate Guide to Mastering the Art and Science of Getting Past No. Objections has already become a number one bestseller, and this is a book that will transform your career because it will give you the frameworks that you need to effectively get past no when you ask buyers to comply with your requests. You can get Objections right now at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or wherever books are sold. Don't wait and don't hesitate. Go right now and pick up Objections. This is one book that I guarantee will make you more money this year. Now, here's part four of my conversation with Patrick Tenney on sales negotiation strategies and tactics. You know, one of the things that strikes me about great negotiations, great partnerships, is that both sides can be competitive within the negotiation, but everybody feels good when they leave the table. Never go into a negotiation without at least, you know, it depends on how important the negotiation is, but uh, but the industry refers to it as a BATNA, B-A-T-N-A, best alternative to a negotiated agreement. All I'm going to say about that is it's backup plans. So if you push everything up on the table, you got nowhere to go. There was a, um, I've got a relative who owned a, a car dealership and I asked him one time, I said, what is the best piece of negotiation advice you'd ever received in your life? And he paused and he said, oh, yeah. He says, Pat, I remember it well. It was a giant in our business. And he used to say, when you're negotiating, he says, always negotiate as though you're feeling like you're negotiating in a round room so that you can always back up somewhere. And by that, I mean, he was, he was trying to say, there's always something that I can reach into my back pocket with an ad. And it could be, now let me throw some other things at you. You buy licenses, you buy research, you have storage, you talked about timing, what about size and quality? And it goes on and on and on. See, it's not all about price. And, and by the way, I, like I've negotiated printing deals where I've said to the, pe- the people involved, print the stuff at three o'clock in the morning. I don't care. Match it up with other stuff that's running at the same time. Get the greatest amount of efficiency that you can get out of this deal. But here's the price that I need you to come in at in order to make this work really well. And they go, oh, you're that flexible. I go, yeah, we just want to get it out the door. They go, wow, I can do that. You should always have a plan B. And, and C that, and D and E and F. Yeah, so that you can walk out with something. I mean, you walk out with something better. Even if the plan B is you're going to come back to the table at another time. You're gonna you're gonna come back with something else. Like you're gonna, but it, it doesn't have to always be a zero sum game. I'm always looking at for me, like when I'm negotiating with a client, what's the hassle factor in this? And what am I giving up long term? Like I, I, I want the money now. Like I want the deal now. But if I get the the, the money now, am I going to live to regret this down the road? Because I've created so much work and hassle for myself. So, like you said, you, you know, if I'm dealing with someone and they say, you know, blah 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 blah, I'm saying, listen, I got to have this rate. I got to have this because I've got to be profitable. Period. I'm a, yeah. I'm a business. I I'm, I exist to run a profit. You got to so have house. this. I'm willing to do these things in order to get this, but I also have to be cognizant on what I'm willing to give away in order to get that, so that I don't end up, you know, six months from now on the, you know, the end of regret or resentment. And I think that you know, that's that's where, like, and I don't think I don't think the individual salesperson always. Sees, sees things that way. Myopically, salespeople are trying to get a deal because they need a commission check this month. Correct. But if you service your account long term, you got to think like an entrepreneur, think like a business owner and say Correct. to yourself, if I make this deal, at what point down the road am I going to be ready to throw this customer out because they're making me nuts? Or do I have to go and, rene- and renegotiate a deal later that's, you know, 
in, in my best interest. And I'm going to say one more thing on that. Sometimes that's the right to, to strategic decision to make. You are so confident in your product. You're so confident in your service. You're so confident that they're going to love you that you're willing to negotiate a deal that's not optimal for your company because you believe that you can prove out the value and you see a cultural fit that you're willing to give up in the short term, but you're going to have to come back and negotiate a better deal for yourself down the road once you've proven that out. But so, that's the strategy. So we refer to that as a, um, a strategic negotiation. Um, and, and it's one where you, you, you know that you're, and, and I'm going to use a term that you may be uncomfortable with, but I'm going to say it anyway. You're buying the business. For a short period of time, yes. you're buying the business, right? I'm not uncomfortable with that at all. Okay, okay. I, okay. I mean, because if you've made that decision, yes. like to buy the business, yes. you just have to make sure you're making the decision in the right way. I mean, well, I see people making decisions to buy the business, and but then they're, they they bought it, but then they don't have any long-term strategy to increase right. the value of the business. That's right. So what, what, ends up pe- what ends up happening, in my view, is that, is that people don't see the panoramic view of what selling is. So I, uh, I look at, at see, what, what some people do is they, they say, well, sales prospecting is here, consultative selling is here, and negotiating is here, but negotiating is over here in a corner. And we treat these other two differently than we treat that one. I'm sorry. It's, it's, it, to me, it's a panoramic view. It's not a vista. And so if it is a panoramic view, it all has to stitch together. And on the way through, uh, what we learn about their culture, their forward planning, the gaps in where it is that they want to be and where they want to go. To me, I call this, you know, everybody talks about pain points. And I know as an industry um, in sales, we've gotten used to the whole idea of talk about pain, talk about pain, talk about pain. What about times when companies are doing really well? They're flying high. I want to fill that gap to their aspirational point as well. You see, what, here's, here's another thing that people are afraid of. They're afraid of to asking hard questions at the beginning. They're afraid of asking hard questions right as you get into the thick of the negotiation, meaning how many people am I negotiating with? What are the relationships that you have with these people? Um, have you, is there any family connections? And it goes on and on and on, right? Because we all know, all right, that there are, there are networks out there that deal with each other and recommend each other. And, and on, the, on the other end, it's like when you do a deal, you just don't do the deal and then push it out to somebody else to implement. And we all know this happens, right? You go and you follow that deal. You call the customer out no matter what the circumstances are. You call them up and you say, how's it working? How are you feeling? How good do you feel? But this also is leverage, right? So if we know that people, the one thing that, that and this is the number one reason why people don't change, especially in a competitive displacement type situation where you're moving, you're, you're taking an incumbent competitor and moving them out so that you can slot yourself in. The number one reason why they don't change is they're afraid you're going to screw your, their business up in the process. And if they're a, let's just say they're, they're working, you know, they're a, they're, a, you know, a manager, a, let's say a mid-level manager, you, you screw up their, their world. They might not lose, they might not have a job. I mean, they don't want that level of investment. Their job is to, is to mitigate risk to them. So by, by selling things at a rate that allows you to implement in a way that is um, creates excellence for your, and a great outcome for your buyer, you're able to get testimonials that when you're sitting down with the buyer says, I want to get it at this rate, you're able to say, you told me that the thing that you are most afraid of is that if you try the new product, it wouldn't work. It would screw something up. It would hurt you with your customer. It would shut down your line. It would um, cause all of your people to be unproductive if you're dealing with software. You told me those things back oh. to discovery, right? Oh. So oh. You said you valued that. If you want that, like I can't come in at this at this price point because I have to be able to pay people to implement. And you know, Patrick, I've used that exact negotiating strategy, and I'm being sincere. I mean, I'm not. This is not a. This is not a. I'm trying to play a game with them. You told me that what you what you valued the most was a vendor who showed up and got it done and didn't create problems. If you want that. You have to give me margin that allows me to put people on that. Otherwise, you're going to keep getting what you've always been getting, which is you you negotiate the lowest possible rate, and then you're unhappy with the outcome. And you're and and if you don't change that 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 paradigm, you're never going to get any better. Now, I've had buyers who said that's okay. I want both of those things. Well, both of those things aren't congruent. You can't have great service and the lowest possible price. It's not congruent. 
it, and it's, it, it's it's really the it, it's it's really the the whole notion of how a quality triangle works. If you want price to be compressed, then we're going to have to compress some quality and or some time. If you want the greatest quality, then that gets associated with the greatest price, and it may involve implementing over a longer period of time. If you want it in two minutes, then it's going to cost you more than it would if if I'm saying you can run it uh, through the middle of the night when only the crickets can hear you making the stuff. Having emotional control, not being attached to the outcome, being confident, being able to, and being able and willing to walk away. So yes. when you have abundance in your pipeline, when you have abundance of sales, you're able to do that. Understanding what your limits are, being willing to walk away, not only I, I need the deal, but I'm not willing to take a deal at this particular level or indeed with, with either price or terms and conditions, because I don't want this level of pain. It's not going to help my business long term. So understanding what those limits are, right? Getting that information down. What, one important thing I have to insert in here, Jeb, because otherwise we're going to miss it, is price contagion. You have to be very careful because when a price hits the street, especially if you're in, in anything that has uh, the slightest smell of commoditization, and I can tell you everything leaks in the world. So I've had to actually walk away from deals that other people would not walk away from in the corporate world. And I can tell you, my colleagues beat me up. At the time, they beat me up. But you know what? Years later, years later, when they came back to me and said, how do we raise these prices? And by the way, what happened over there? I said, well, I wasn't involved in this one that's gone a little bit too low. I was involved in this one, and I had to walk away from the business. He goes, for gosh sakes, Pat, thank God you did walk away. Can you imagine the mess we'd be in? Because, you know, you think about the United States. You know, if, if, if let's say your customer has, um, you know, let's say they're in every state and you lower a price in one state where that, where that price should not be lowered and all of a sudden everybody starts to talk to each other and all, yeah. of, a sudden, all of a sudden margin compression goes down. The other thing you have to watch out is, is, is people compressing time on you. I talk about it as being time compression and time decompression. The longer time stretches out and you're still talking to each other quite engaged, and you have what you would call are those commitments to move through, then you know you're moving well. And you have all the stakeholders involved, and mm -hmm. all the stakeholders are collaborating and exploring with you. On the other end of that, you have time compression where somebody calls up and they say, all right, I know everything that goes on in your industry. I have a budget of, uh, let's say for argument's sake, um, something meaningful in our business. I got a budget of uh, $50,000, and I'm going to make a decision this afternoon. It's Friday afternoon. What's your best deal? Yeah. That you're, you're, that you, you fail every time in those deals if you don't slow the process down. Gotta slow it's still, it still speeds you up to slow you down process. I've and watched, I've watched sales reps get, get creamed on that very oh. thing. What it, what it says to you, what it says to you is that any pricing that you do have, you have to have incredibly good databases and files to be able to go back, even with existing customers who are coming back at you on price uh, over and over again. You go, Wait a minute, you know. And by the way, prices can go up, and why do they go up? because of scarcity. And, that, and people say that all the time, I can't charge them this price now. I mean, we charged them that price last time, I, but you're like, but we have less of it now. So we yeah. can charge more. Yeah. And you know, it's why, you know, why do airplanes cost more right before you're going to get on the airplane than it did three months from now? Because it's just, it's, 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 it's supply and demand. It's basic economics. I want to take you back though, to the, the price integrity piece. This is strategy. If you're and, and by the way, the individual salesperson, for the most part, you don't get to pick the strategy. Your company's picking the strategy. So, yes, if, you've got to change. if the strategy is to buy the business, mm -hmm. then the company has to have a mechanism to to increase those rates over time or reduce prices enough to get margin out of out of squeeze enough out of those lemons. If you want price integrity, you call it price contagion, but you want price integrity, then you got to you got to stay within a range. And it's interesting when I help salespeople get, you know, close to what pricing is. And I, I, want, I, want, to, I want them to, I want to get them upfront and personal. I'll have salespeople saying, well, but we can't sell anything because our prices are so much higher than our competitors. And I'll look it over at the manager and I go, can you give it away for free if you wanted to? And in most of my clients, there's somebody in the room that has the ability to go, yeah, I could give it away free. I go, see, your price can be anywhere between zero and whatever you want it to be because you have you can make a decision. There are people in this company that can make a decision to give it away for free. It is not the rate. It's the way you see that. It's it's 
It's that your, your, your customer is telling you what your competitor's rates are. And that's where you're getting all of your information. And it is in their best interest to tell you that your competitor is lower than you are. On the next episode, we'll have the fifth and final part of my conversation with Patrick Tinney on sales negotiation strategies. Now, go right now to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or wherever books are sold and pick up a copy of my brand new book, Objections, The Ultimate Guide to Mastering the Art and Science of Getting Past No. This is one book that I guarantee will make you more money this year. <music> 